Hello and welcome to Limitless Life. I am Larry Hutton and I am just so honored to be able to bring you the bread of life each program that we come on the air and, and just be able to serve it up to you and let you partake of it and it just uh, elevates your life to a new level and just cause you to overcome in life. You know, we all face tests and trials and obstacles in life. But when we do things God's way, you know, his way is higher than man's ways. His thoughts are higher than man's thoughts. When we do things God's way, it just makes it so much easier because we overcome not by our strength and our power, but by his. It's like Ephesians uh, 6 10 says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Don't be strong in you and the power of your might. Learn to be strong in Jesus and the power of His might. And when you do, then you overcome in life. You can overcome sickness and disease. You overcome lack and poverty. You overcome fear and panic. And you overcome hurt feelings. You overcome all the curses that are associated with the kingdom of darkness. And you get to then walk in the light as He is in the light. Ooh, man, that's awesome. We get to walk even as Jesus walked because as he is, so are we in this world, the Bible says. So we are now in our eighth week. Actually, this is the end of our eighth week of a series that I titled Believe for Great Things. Now, of course, we're talking about believing God for great things. So believe for great things. This is going to be our 40th lesson. I told you the end of last lesson. I'm going to have to go next week on this subject again because there's just so much here about believing God for great things and how it pleases God. It actually pleases God. Remember, we went through the scriptures and found out there are 15 things from Genesis to Revelations, all through the Old and New Testament. There are just 15 things that I could find if there's maybe one or two more you might find, but 15 things that I found that actually says brought God pleasure or pleased Him. And faith was one of those 15. That's a short list. Even if you found a couple more, that is a very short list when you're talking the entire Bible and only this, these few things talk about pleasing God and using our faith or believing Him for great things actually brings Him pleasure. So we're going to keep talking about this. Hebrews chapter 12 has been our foundation text that we've been using through all these, although we've learned a lot of stuff. We've learned, um, we, well, let's just read Hebrews 12, uh, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I wanted to point that out. Uh, looking unto Jesus. I was about to say we learned a lot when we looked in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, um, the hall of faith, a lot of people call it, you know, in Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about Enoch and Abraham and, and Sarah and J uh, Joshua, just all the different people that believe God for great things by their faith. They use faith in God. But looking unto Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So for us today under the new covenant, we've got, we've got to get our eyes on Jesus. And, and we found out by going to all the verses we've looked at over these last two months that looking to Jesus means looking to the finished work of Jesus, looking to what he accomplished on the cross for us and then by his uh, death, burial, and then his resurrection when he raised us up so that we could partake of everything that he did for us on the cross. Um, and then verse 3 of, of Hebrews 12, 3, consider him. So we've got to make sure we consider Him. And we've already discussed what that means, the looking and the considering Him. And that just, it means you got to get your eyes off the stuff you're facing and get them onto Him so that when you're going through the stuff, the tests and trials, you'll, you'll come through victorious. I did, we did talk about every one of us have enough faith. Remember when Romans 12, 3 says, God's given to every man the measure or a measure. That word measure is actually metron. The word the or a is not in the context or in the manuscript. So we have added some of the translation says every man, every man given the measure. Some, some say a measure. But really the truth is it's metron. Whether you use a or the, a Metron or the metron. Everybody gets a metron, the same metron of, of faith that, that anybody else gets. Nobody gets one portion and somebody else get another portion. We all get faith. And God's given us a metron of his faith enough to remove any obstacle in our life, enough to, to flat um, turn, <laughs> man, turn us right side up, so to speak. If something, all hell's breaking loose, got you upside down, man, we have enough faith to move mountains, to, to cause the devil to flee. 
we have enough faith because God's given. In fact, let me show you something we haven't looked at. I've, I've quoted some of this passage before, but let's look at something I didn't show you before. Second Peter chapter 1, talking about you and I have faith. And this faith pleases God. This faith will move mountains. This faith will cause us to be able to believe for great things in our life. So look what um, Peter said, the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those, now it's going to tell us who, who he's talking to, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us, by the righteousness of God and Savior Jesus Christ. So it's talking about us, isn't it? Grace and peace be multiplied to you mm, in the knowledge of Him. Here's how grace and peace are multiplied is through or in the knowledge of Jesus. The knowledge of what God has done in Jesus, we found out by all the other passages we've already looked at. As His divine power, verse 3, has, past tense, given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. So again, this, this, um, these things that belong to us, all of, all of God's divine power has given to us that power that raised Jesus from the dead. We know it was the power of laying our sins and all the curses on Jesus, and then the power of, of raising Jesus up from the dead and the power of raising us up with Him. That power has given to us all things that pertain to our lives and to live in godly through the knowledge. So it's through the knowledge of Jesus that we release that, and that's why we say faith comes by hearing the Word of God, or faith has its, is activated by, by when we hear the Word of God, and the Word of God releases its power and grace flows to us, but it's all based on what Jesus already did. But what I wanted you to see here in verse 1 is, this is written to those who have obtained. You need to underline that in your Bible if you can. Uh, if you have a Bible like mine, an a, a electronic Bible, you can underline, highlight, circle, whatever you want to do, but you can do it in your leather Bible too. So, to those who have obtained like precious faith. Like. Peter is saying, you've got the same faith I've got. Wow. And remember, Peter walked along in the sh and just his shadow fall get touching people caused people to get healed. Man, that's awesome. So, you and I have obtained, we have obtained. I want, you to, I want you to see that before we go on. Of course, we've you know, already discussed a lot of this, but I just haven't showed you this verse. We know Romans 12, 3, God says He's given us a metron of His faith. And it's enough faith to move any mountain in our life. But I just want you to see, we have obtained. You don't have to try and get more. You've got enough. You've got enough through eternity, bless God have obtained, like precious faith. So just like Peter's, but notice it's called precious faith. So we know by all the scriptures we've looked at already, it pleases God, but look at this, he, he calls it precious. Precious faith, I like that. All right, so last program, we ended in Hebrews chapter four. And so I wanna just go back to verse 14 again, seeing then that we have a great high priest who is past through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us, and this is what we were talking about last program, hold fast our confession. So we hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but when his all points tempted just like we are yet without sin. So in other words, he overcame it all for us already. So therefore, we can come boldly to the throne of grace, obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Look at verse 14. Verse 14 says, hold fast our confession. Hold fast. Why would God say hold fast? Think about it. God would not tell us to hold fast unless there were things trying to steal our faith. Remember, we read this whole passage from verse 1 all the way down through, and we found out it's talking about faith that enters into the rest of the 
finished work that we're finished from the foundation of the world. So we're, our faith rest. If you're not resting, if you're worrying, you're not in faith. If you're stressed about things, you're not in faith. If you're panicking uh, about things, you're not in faith. If you're upset and mad and angry and flying off the handle, bad temper, you're not in faith. Faith is a rest. Faith rest in the finished work of Jesus, which is what causes grace to flow. That's how you got saved. You had to get saved based on Jesus bore your sins. It was all finished by Him. It's the same way you get healed, the same way you prosper financially, the same way you take total control of your emotions where you control how you feel every day of your life instead of things or people. So he says, hold fast. So how do you hold fast? Well, we said it says hold fast uh, to the confession of your faith. So how do we hold fast to the words of faith? Confession, our confession of faith. How do we hold fast to those words? By the word. We hold fast by the word. You stay full of the word. You do like, look like we were, what we were talking about, looking unto Jesus. You keep looking to Him. You keep looking to the word. It's the only way to hold fast. In fact, turn over uh, to John, 1 John chapter 5 with me, 1 John chapter 5. And it says, this is the confidence, I'm going to read verses 14 and 15, 1 John 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in Jesus that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of Him. So it says, this is the confidence. Remember, we're, we're to come boldly, and we found coming boldly is based on faith and resting in it is finished. So it's all about what Jesus has already done. So this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His what? According to His will. We call the New Testament the last will and testament. So we know according to His will, you could say according to His word. So we ask anything according to His word, which is His will, He hears us. And if we know He hears us, which we know He does if we ask according to His will, whatever we ask, we know we have. You need to underline the circle we have. Not that we are going to get someday but that we have the petition, or in other words, we have what we've asked for. We have what we ask for before any physical evidence. Are you getting this? That's, and that, that would explain why God would say, hold fast to your confession of faith. Hold fast to your confession of what you are believing. So, by looking at the Word continually will cause us to hold fast and it'll keep us in rest, which then will release grace, which is the finished work of Jesus being released to us. That's why James uh, uh, said what he did. He was trying to get this across in James. Let's go over to James 1.22 real quick. I, I kind of hate to leave First John here. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, so you find out it's God's will for you to be healed. Man, you ask by faith, receive it by faith. It's finished. Okay, I'm resting in the finished work. I'm resting. I'm already healed. Then the Bible says we have what we've asked for. You have it before you feel it. You already have it. But that's why we have to keep looking because we have to hold fast our profession, especially when you come boldly to the throne of grace. You obtain mercy and find grace to help. You've obtained it. You've got it. We have obtained like precious faith. We have obtained all the promises. We've, have, we've obtained everything that pertains to life and godliness. But it's through His knowledge, and so we stay with the Word of God. Look here at James chapter 1. I hope you're getting something. This is helping. I know this is helping people. James 1, 22, but be doers of the Word. Being doer of the Word, one of those things we're seeing now, let Scripture interpret Scripture, is holding fast to the profession of what the Word says that you are believing. But, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if anyone is a hearer of the Word, not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But... Verse 25, whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty 
and continues in it is italicized. The words in it were not in the original manuscript. So continues, continues what? Well, the Bible said he who looks, so continues looking. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues looking, he is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So you're going to get the fruit of the faith because you've continued You've, 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 uh, looking unto Jesus, you've considered him. Remember, consider him lest you get wearied and, and faint in your mind. This sounds like a person that doesn't get weary and faint in their minds, uh, because they've looked into the perfect law of liberty, which remember verse 22 calls it the word of God. So we know uh, rightly dividing the perfect law of liberty mirror that you're supposed to be gazing into to reflect what God says you look like and what God says you are and what God says you have and what God says you can do. You look into that perfect law of liberty mirror is the word. You're looking into the word and the only the word is the only thing you can base faith in God in. Once we once we base our faith in God in the word, then we continue looking. And this is what um, this is what. Oh, man, this is so good. This is really what we're seeing looking, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, continuing to look, look away from the circumstances, look to the word, looking into the perfect law of liberty and continue looking, which means we're going to have temptations and tests and trials and stuff like that's going to try and keep us from continuing to gaze at Jesus and on the word of God. But if we continue to look, then our faith will stay in rest and our faith is completely in what Jesus has already done. So grace empowers us, but we have to keep speaking it and you have to stay full of the word to keep speaking it. Your profession of faith, your confession of faith has to be all about Jesus, all about the word. Let me show you 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in verse number 13. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what, it is, what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Let me read a couple other translations. Message translation. We are not keeping this quiet. Not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believed it, so I said it. We say what we believe. The Bible in basic English but having the same spirit of faith as it is said in the writings, the words of my mouth came from the faith in my heart. In the same way, our words are the outcome of our faith. So it says, I believed and therefore spoke. I believed in what? Therefore. Anytime you see the word therefore, stop and see what it's there for. I believed and therefore I spoke. In other words, I spoke because... I believed. So when you believe something, you're going to speak something. So depending on what you believe is what you're going to speak, and what you speak is what you're going to have. Yeah. Uh, remember Proverbs uh, 18, 21, out, uh, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So do you want life or death coming out? It's going to be handed to you. So he says, so I believed and therefore I speak. Well, if I believe God's word by looking to Jesus and continue looking to Jesus and I consider Jesus, then I don't get weary and faint in my mind. Then I'm going to continue to speak the word. It's going to work in my life. It's going to bring fruit in my life. And that's what we're talking about. And we having the same spirit of faith, the spirit of faith is faith that's in action. It's faith that's being released. The spirit, you could say the breath because when you're speaking words, you're releasing your breath. So the spirit of faith is words coming out of your mouth. It's actions of faith. Believe is an action. It's a verb and faith is, is, is us releasing uh, what we believe about God. And if we believe God, and speak his word, we're going to have great things happen in our life. Um, let me go on down since we're right here in the uh, fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. We just read verse 13. Look at verse 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. 
Notice what he says, for our light affliction. So he says, all these tests and trials we're going through, and if you read the ones he went through, you wouldn't think, well, those weren't light. But he says, when I'm looking to Jesus, everything in this world becomes light and easy. He said, our light affliction is but for a moment, so it's going to be short and easy. A moment means short, and light means easy. It, uh, our light affliction, the things that are afflicting us and testing us and trying us, are going to only last for a moment while, verse 18 says, while we do not look at the things which are seen. So here's somebody operating the spirit of faith. They're not looking at the things that are seen. They're not, they're not focusing their attention on the natural realm, but at the things that are not seen. That's the supernatural realm. That's the power of God. That's the, the, the life of God. That's the, 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 lift, the life and the power that's available in God's Word that you can't actually see. For the things that are seen, all our circumstances, symptoms, situations are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. This word look, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but we look. This is a great example again of the, the word look in, in Hebrews 12 to looking to Jesus. Remember, it means to look away from one thing and then to stare at another. That's exactly, this, this gives us the exact definition. Do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. How do you do that? You can only do that with the eye of faith. <laughs> with your sixth sense, you, you look, you hold fast, you hold fast. Why? Because you know if you're looking to Jesus, it's going to be easy. He just said it's going to be easy and it's going to not last long, this affliction you're going through. It's going to be short. That reminds me of Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 11. Look at verses 28, 29, and 30 here. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28, Jesus said, come to me. Now, remember, we already found out uh, this, of course, when he's saying this, it's before he went to the cross. So now you and I can come to him based on that we're already in him. He's in us. He's already got everything that pertains to life and godliness and given it to us. And our faith rests and our faith rests in the finished work. But watch this. Uh, come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. See, when we're looking to Jesus, we get rest. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm gentle, lowly in heart. You'll find rest in your souls. Verse 30, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. That's, that's the same thing that he's saying here in 2 Corinthians. For our light affliction is but for a moment. It's going to work a far more exceedingly eternal weight of glory while we don't look at the things that we can look at in the natural realm, but while we do look at the things that you can't see in the natural realm, but they're in the spirit realm, for the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. So God's blessings, God's promises, the power and life that's in God's Word, you can't see it, and the grace of God and all the things that Jesus did on the cross. You can't maybe see those with the eyes, but bless God, we believe it's finished. We believe it's done. We believe it's already finished and already accomplished because we're resting. His yoke is easy. The word yoke means joined to, just like a yoke joins, uh, you know, the oxen. Um, a yoke, when you're yoked to Jesus, you're joined to Jesus. And the only way you stay joined, you can unyoke when you start fearing and worrying and stuff, you know, instead of exercising faith. But keep your faith joined to Him by speaking the Word, staying full of the Word of God. Don't let the Word of God, remember Joshua 1, uh, don't let the Word of God depart out of your mouth, but meditate day and night that you may observe to do it uh, according to all that's written in it. Then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Saying the same thing. We've got to make sure we speak the word, but you do it by meditating day and night. You stay in the word. Keep full. Man, to, in today's society, we have no excuse not to be full of the word of God. With technology the way it is, we can, we can listen to the word on a watch now. You can listen to the word on your phones. You can listen to the word of God on MP3s, downloads onto your computers and, and tablets and and in your car and everywhere you go, I mean, in your shower, <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are, you can listen to the Word. So we have no excuse not staying full of the Word. And staying full of the Word is the only way you're going to have your 
profession. Hold fast to your profession so that you come boldly to the throne of what? Grace and find grace to help in time of need. So if you want grace to continually flow to you, which you should want it because it's the only way you're going to have great things happen in your life. If you want great things happening, that means you're going to have to have grace flowing. And if you want grace flowing, then you have to rest. You have to believe in it is finished. We saw that in, in Hebrews there. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, we found out faith is a rest, and it's all rest just like God rested after it was finished. Now, now He tells us to rest because it's finished, just like He did. So we're supposed to rest. We rest in the finished work of Jesus. It is finished. He's already saved us. He's already healed us. He's already made us financially free, but we have to receive it all by faith. He's already given us His peace and joy, and we can walk free from depression or turmoil or hurt feelings or guilt or shame. We can walk free from all of it because it is finished. Whew, man, I can't wait till next week, man. We're going to get into some more good stuff next week, and it's just going to help continue to bolster your faith so you'll find yourself believing God for great things as well. Thank you again for joining us. Please make sure you share these things with other people. And then thank you for supporting the program. If you haven't yet done that, help us reach others like our partners are helping us reach you. Thank you, partners. We love you. We call you blessed. Have a wonderful day. Until next time, have a Jesus-filled day. Bye-bye. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to larryhutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Do you know yourself, who you really are? Not the natural carnal person that the world says you are, but the saved, word-filled, Holy Spirit-empowered believer that you really are in the eyes of God. At times, each of us has struggled with our identity, ability, and purpose in our lives as believers. But God's Word is filled with His descriptions of who you really are in Him. In this two-part scripture recording, you will hear Dr. Hutton quote all the Bible scriptures about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what you can do in Christ. In Him scriptures will help you build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith, enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do, not in your own power, but in Him. To order in him scriptures, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to larryhutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.